Welcome to the Chai Academy, being broadcast live from the Chai Center. We are in smack dab in the middle of a course called Fascinating Jewish Personalities. And uh, each course will focus on a different person, and you do not have to see the previous course to be able to follow along. So the last one, I think, was Chaim Wiseman, the, 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 the first president of Israel, fascinating person. Um, the, the, uh, today's, today is, is um, Shimshon Rafael Hirsch, Samson Rafael Hirsch, a very important figure in, um, in Judaism. He was born in, in um, I think, 1808, and he had, a, he had a lot on his plate. He was in, uh, born in, in Germany. And um, what, what, what he did, what he, I mean, it, there, there's a lot of detractors, but, um, but basically um, he, he, he maintained balance in an extremely turbulent world, an extremely turbulent time. So the, um, Samson Rafael Hirsch, by the way, was an incredible prolific author. He, he um, and I use his stuff, you know, at, on, on Shabbat when I when I uh, give my sermon or my mini sermons. Um, a lot of a lot of what I have is 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 um, taken from his works, because he he wrote a book on, on Torah. He wrote a book on um, orthodoxy. He wrote a book on prayer and Psalms, um, and there was a lot of stuff that was printed posthumously. Also, um, anyway, the bottom line is that while he was unyielding in his orthodoxy on matters of, of, of Jewish law. So he was very, very extremely strict when it came to Jewish law, and he was very observant, very orthodox. Um, and, and he had a line, by the way, that it's not that Judaism needs reform, it's Jews need reform. Um, and um, he, 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 he did break with traditional Judaism um, on non-essential matters. So let's let's. Um, he he. Um, by the way, when he went to he went to college, um, and he was there, he was matriculated. I don't think he, he he went. I think he went for a couple of years. But the same college that the head of the reform movement, and they they actually were antagonists because he was he was um, strongly defending orthodoxy. And um, the, the, there was this fellow who we'll talk about in, 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 other, in another class who was um, pr promoting reform. And that's what he said. It's Jews need reform, not Judaism. So, so he went to college. Now, most rabbis from Europe and Eastern Europe forbade college. It was just forbidden. It was absolutely not allowed because they felt it was... Um, and, 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 Rightly so, as a, as a rabbi, I was a Chabad rabbi on campus. Um, rightly so, that 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 going to a general college can lead to assimilation. We know it can lead to intermarriage. We know it can lead to less observance. Um, college college is a, is a tricky place uh, for somebody who wants to um, maintain their Jewishness. So um, so there are there is you know Yeshiva University and there is there are other colleges that that um, one can send their kids to. Binghamton is, is, for example, has a tremendous Jewish presence, tremendous Jewish observance. And, um, and then you can have other colleges smack dab in the middle of Montana that, that you know, that, that don't. So um, it, it, it's tricky. So, but he, um, he did go to college and he did believe in going to college because he felt that people needed to become educated and work for a living professionally. That was his push. That was his push. Um, and, and so therefore, he himself went to college. Um, he, he himself um, uh, learned English as well as German. Um, he was you know, an extremely educated fellow. Um, but once again, he maintained a balance. It wasn't just that he didn't chuck orthodoxy down the river. He didn't, um, you know, and, and he didn't embrace orthodoxy to the point where you can't go to college. Um, and by the way, there's so many opportunities now for somebody who wants to go as, 
know, in addition to what I said above. Um, he also delivered sermons in German, which was unheard of. It was unheard of. So what he, what he, um, uh, you know, the rabbis in Russia and Poland, they delivered it in Yiddish. Right? They wouldn't, they wouldn't stoop to the level of delivering this uh, sermon in Polish or Russian or Ukrainian right, or Slovakian or whatever. They did it in Yiddish. He wanted to attract Hamoin Am. He wanted to attract not only the Yiddish speaking people. He also wanted to do outreach to, to, to connect with the, the, the uh, German speaking people. Um, he said, and this is, so here's a couple of places where, you know, he was challenged. The college was one, giving a sermon, two. He also, he had a very interesting take. Um, he said, the mission of the Jew in diaspora in addition to keeping all the mitzvahs you can keep, he believed in pure hum humanity. That Jews have to be involved in helping others in social causes. Not unlike the reform, by the way, whose, whose, whose um, slogan was tikkun olam, right? To, to, prepare, to prepare the world, to correct the world, to, right? to, to, to um, perfect the world, etc. But he wasn't just at Tikkun Olam. He, he believed that you had to have, be ritually correct. You had to practice your Judaism. You had to keep Shabbat, keep kosher. So once again, there you have the balance. Um, and that's what I admire most in him, is that he, he yes, you got to be involved in social causes, but not at the sacrifice of keeping Shabbat or keeping kosher. And, 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 I, and I think I'm no connoisseur of, of, of you know, the reform back in the day, but, um, but they were Tikkun Olam and there was no focus really. There was very little focus on, on mitzvahs and, and, and uh, they had some, but he said you can't stray one iota on, on law. It's interesting, he was an anti-Zionist because he felt that he did not want he, he like like many like most Orthodox back in the day, um, he did not um, believe that Israel is necessarily helpful if it's going to be under a secular government, and he also felt that our mission in diaspora is to help people in diaspora. So therefore, he 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 um he was no liberal, he was no liberal, and he opposed Zionism. And he fought with other rabbis, other German rabbis, Orthodox rabbis who were pro-Zionism. And he said, there's no reason, there's no reason. We can do, we can accomplish a lot, but we can, we can accomplish much here. We don't have to run to, to Israel and accomplish. There is so much work to do here in terms of outreach, in terms of help, help you know, humanity, uh, being a humanitarian, um, keeping the laws, teaching the laws, etc. And as I said, he was very, very prolific. He wrote many, many, many books. Um, one of the books, aside from the ones on Torah, one of my first books that I ever bought as, as a young rabbi was his. It was called 19 Letters. The original name was 19 Letters of Ben Oziel. But, um, but when his, uh, I believe his son or grandson, um, he edited the book, it was called 19 Letters letters and in in his book he is completely unapologetic unapologetic for who he is what he stands for um, and and, um, and 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 sometimes difficult stands for so he, he he didn't believe in reform he felt reform would eventually water down Judaism to the point where it would be we would become white Anglo-Saxon Protestants right that, that we, we just assimilate so and and in the book he really talks about orthodoxy. He also talks about being proud of Jews, proud of your heritage, proud of your mitzvahs, not to hide it in any way, shape, or form. What he was most famous for is his line, Torah im derech eretz. Torah with the way of the world. So he he um he he 
believed, he believed that schools should not only teach, you know, the Torah, the Talmud, the Mishnah, the laws, etc. He believed it should also teach math, history, you know, social studies, um, geography, you know, uh, biology. He believed that, that you have to teach so that way that the person is well rounded and that way they can you know they can they can have a, a profession. Now there was actually an argument as to why he did it. So one school was it was just it was Hiraj Shah, it was just for a specific time. He wanted to save the Jews of Germany from running to to non Jewish schools, so he formed a a Jewish school with secular studies. Others felt no. He wanted uh, he wanted Jews to be a, a a basically be be an upstanding human being who, who who you can you're able to go to law school you're able to be a doctor you're able to be so that's what he wanted he, and and um, and basically modern orthodoxy that's what they are right so they're 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 strict in their orthodoxy but they are lawyers they are doctors. You have you have non-modern Orthodox also. You have you know, um, Orthodox Orthodox also doctors, and but they're few, they're fewer and far between. Modern Orthodox, um, which which is you know they're, they're Flatbush and, and uh, East Flat. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous to to, to, to say uh, you know where they're everywhere, everywhere, and a wholesome group. But they believe Torah in their heads, Torah and secular studies, and that way. You don't have to be a burden on society. You don't have to do a menial job, etc. Um, he actually, it was, it was, it was the whole yeshiva university. Their slogan, Torah Mada, is based on his approach. But the third opinion was, yes, Rabbi Hirsch allowed us to 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 um, to, to, to to go to college and to, uh, and and to learn secular studies in school. However, less humanities, more science. Humanity is somewhat of a waste of time. Science is not, because science is more congruous with, with with Torah and orthodoxy. So there you have the three schools of thought about what he was thinking, and um, it's hard to know. It was probably a hybrid of, of all three. Um, he he traveled. He was a rabbi in many different places. He actually tried to become the rabbi, chief rabbi of England. And um, he got, there was a few contenders. He actually, um, there were like 135 synagogues that voted and he only got two synagogues. So I guess his, his name um, didn't precede him. But he was a chief rabbi of different places in Germany. And he eventually became the chief rabbi of, of Frankfurt am Main. So there's two, two Frankfurts. There's a smaller Frankfurt and there's Frankfurt am Main, which is, which is uh, um, you know, a huge, cosmopolitan city I've been there um, and um, it, it's he was he was the, he was the rabbi and he actually is buried in Frankfurt in he was buried in the Jewish cemetery where greats and nobles are buried um, he, he, he um, so he, he had um, he, he was a rabbi there for 37 years he was the chief rabbi and and um, his shul his synagogue was run based on his philosophy so he attracted Jewish professionals who perhaps in the past would have not been Orthodox because they would have felt out of place. He did, you know, his his synagogue was based on Hirschism, you know, it was based on 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 on, on his his way. Um, and interesting, in 1930s, when Jews who, who went to Frankfurt, I mean, Right, which is you know those, those, those Jews who were in a shul. By the way, there was like five hundred families. It's a, it was a huge. It still is a huge shul. Um, I don't think it doesn't get five hundred families, but but it still is a huge shul. But Frankfurt, I mean, um, people left the shul. People left Europe because they had a precursor of what was to come, the Nazis, etc. And the Hirsch people, the Torah with their Heretz, where did they move to? They moved to Washington Heights which is the headquarters of the modern Orthodox movement, which is where, where the, 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 um, his children and his grandchildren all set up there, and uh, the Breuers and, and, and uh, Shimon Schwab, and, and that's where YU was founded, with the same principle. 
So um, he also found out a good Israel. I mean, there's a lot of things that this person had his had his thing, but his idea was that you to be Orthodox doesn't mean you have to be a peasant. Being Orthodox does not mean that you have to. You can wear have a suit and be Orthodox. He didn't, by the way. He dressed he dressed like an Orthodox rabbi at the time. Um, like didn't have this tie yet, right? Um, you know, he dressed with this big black kippah and long black kaftan, a robe, etc. But but he believed that 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 was not essential. Clothes is is, is doesn't make the man, right? So so. You know, you you know, you can be who you want to be, and still be a a, a, a God fearing, ritually correct, observant Jew. The balance. He's, it's interesting that his daughter Rachel, who passed away, fifties uh, I think, she was the first female doctor ever to go to university. And this took place in, in Germany, in Prussia. Um, while well, well, it was still called Prussia. So, so you know, she lived up to his ideals. His son, Mendel, was more of a scholar, Jewish scholar. So he was, you know, basically a, 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 a rabbi. But, um, you know, his daughter became, his daughter became a, a, um, an MD, you know, a, a doctor of medicine, um, and still maintained her orthodoxy. His, his family, for the most part, are very strictly religious. And um, they, they're none worse for the wear. If you go to Washington Heights today, it is a thriving, thriving Jewish community with lots of synagogues and lots of, um, you know, apartment buildings full of, you know, of Orthodox Jews with, you know, pizza shops and restaurants and, and uh, shawarma places, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it, it, is, it is truly, you know, a bastion of Judaism. In Washington Heights, so you know we think of Bar Park, we think of Lakewood. There's another the enclave, um, is is, um, is is Washington Heights, and that's all followers, all followers of of Rabbi Samson Rafael Hirsch. Interesting to know the cemetery where he's buried in. So it has different rebbe's, Hasidic rebbe's there, um, and um, it's closed Monday, so don't go on a Monday. But um, it. it outside on the, the ancient cemetery wall. The ancient, ancient cemetery wall. The cemetery, by the way, is, is connected right to the Jewish Museum, which was made after the Holocaust to show what it, life looked like, what life was, etc., before the Nazis came. But the, the, on the wall, there are bronze tablets about this big, yay big. And it's basically the name of every Jew that was killed in the Holocaust, who who um, who resided in Frankfurt, I mean, right, in that city, and the wall is long, and th there must be twelve thousand names. Right, once in a while, there's a name covered up because they found out he, the person didn't die, so they covered it up. They you know they didn't take off the the gold the brass plaque. They just covered it with you know whatever. A um, couple of notable names. Even though they they, they they didn't die in Frankfurt, but they were born in Frankfurt, is um, is is Anne Frank. And and Anne Frank and her family, there's a few names with the Frank family, because they're famous personalities that actually left Frankfurt. I mean, you know, and and um, went to Amsterdam, etc. Um, anyway, so I'm I'm um, I really enjoy his his scholarly works. Um, you know, he has a tremendous um, a tremendous commentary on Genesis, just just tremendous. It's like you know, it's it's you study it and you say, wow, and it all fits. There is there's a there's a great ra there's a rabbi that I've met. And he came here to speak once, Rabbi David Foreman, and his lectures are, are fascinating. It's all based a mass, much of it is based on Samson Rufal Hirsch, so that's what that's been my experience. So anyway, so a uh, an interesting man. A man of balance. That, to me, to me, that is the name of the game. You have to have balance, right? You cannot, you cannot, you know, work all day and no time for your family. You cannot only spend time with your family and and not work. That's balance, right? 
your, 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 um, your children rebel, right? So, you, and you know, and, and they, let's say they rebel against God, they're not, you know, whatever. The, the balance would be to, to love them. You don't love their rebelliousness, uh, but you love them. There's the balance. You love them. It doesn't change anything about them. So he taught me a lot. God bless. May, may you have a pleasant day.